Hey, thanks for joining me today. This video is about the Zam Web Grid filter settings. Now, if you have a grid and you want to enable some filtering on it, there's a couple different modes that you can use. This one here is set up to use the filter menu. So if you notice, I can go here to the units on order and I have this, this menu here and I can say, well, I just want to take a look at all of the items that have uh, the value of four. And that quickly filters the items in the grid. I can come back and I can... Uh, select all of them once again and then take a look at them. So that's one mode. There's the filter menu, but there's another filter mode that you can use that puts the filtering control at either the top or the bottom of the grid. So let me update this grid and you can see how that looks as well. So now I've updated this grid and I put the, the filter row at the top of the grid and you'll notice based off of the data type it shows you what type of uh, filtering it's going to try to do. So if I go in here and start typing P, you'll see that it, sort, it filters down all the P items. So I can clear that as well. Or I could come to this in numeric column here and say, well, I just want to look at the items that have the value of 4. So I can do that also. It's very, very simple to enable this. And so let me go ahead and show you the XAML to make it all work. So here I am in Visual Studio 2008, and basically the, the working parts of this demo are the XAM web grid and the view model. And so I'm, I'm including the view model in the standard fashion. I've declared a namespace here, and uh, this is the, the namespace location for my view model class. I'll show you it in a moment. And then I have this IG grid namespace that points over to infragistics.silverlight.controls in the assembly of infragistics.silverlight XAM web grid version 10.1. So that's where you'll find it if you're uh, looking to do this from scratch. Now let's take a look at the view model really quickly. This is a, a very simple view model class. So I have an instance of this observable collection for my items here based off of the inventory item type and it's lazy initialized so as the item count is equal to zero then I add in the inventory items. So um, once the items are added to the collection, then I just return the items. And that's basically all there is to the view model for this page. So let's return back up to the XAML here. And you can see that uh, I've got the XAM web grid. And all I need to do is add a small piece of XAML in order to turn on the filtering. So I'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll talk about the different settings. So in the grid, after I've declared the columns, I can come in and open up the XAM web grid filter settings and then define the filter settings by say allow filtering. Now you'll see here that this enumeration takes a couple different values here. We have the filter menu, filter row bottom, filter row top, and then none. So if we set up the filter menu, that is uh, what I showed you from the beginning that gave you the, the checkbox list. So let's run this in the browser and, and see how it performs. So here's our grid and when we click on the filter icon you can see that we have the drop down so we can select all of them, uh, all the fours at least, and go back. And so let's update it now as well to see what it looks like when we do. Let's put the filter at the bottom this time because we haven't seen that yet. Filter row bottom, and I'll just recompile. And then when we refresh the page, that gives us the filter row down here at the bottom. Again, I can filter by P's or I can say I just want to look at the items that are equal to four. So there you go, that's, uh, that's filtering with the XAM web grid. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.